Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here. Today we're going to be talking about a brand new game called Air Twister, which I recognize I don't usually do any sort of gameplay or game uh, reviews unless it's very specific special cases, which this kind of is. So we're going to do that. Before we do that, though, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you've never done that before, as well as check out all my social media stuff in the description. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, as well as my Spreadshirt and my travel channel. I appreciate the support on those platforms. Thank you so much. Now, yes, yeah, so what we're going to do here, I'm just going to kick off some gameplay footage. This is a game called Called Air Twister. This is going to be a relatively short video because I just kind of wanted to give my two cents on this. Normally, I don't really do gameplay videos unless it's like Dreamcast specific stuff or in a very unique case uh, like Shenmue 3 when that came out because that was such a big deal for me. Um, this one is kind of tangentially connected to Shenmue in the sense that this game is actually created by Yu Suzuki, the creator of the Shenmue franchise. Uh, I've actually met Yu Suzuki multiple times during all the Shenmue promotion stuff. Awesome guy and obviously a legacy or a legend in the uh, gaming uh, video game industry. So this is actually his latest title. Now the game's history was originally that it was created by uh, YSNet, which is his company. Uh, it started back a few years ago. I think he had kind of vaguely talked about the idea in like 2008, and then like 2015 it started getting more serious. Uh, and then after Shenmue 3 wrapped up, they really kind of amped up production. Eventually it would be released on the whole Apple Arcade system, which I'm not very familiar with, but I do know that that meant that it got an iOS release uh, back in 2022. Uh, uh, and that version of the game caught a couple of updates with some extra modes and so on and so forth. But it, for a time, it seemed like his new game was just going to be exclusive to that system, or not even system, to that infrastructure, if you will. Uh, but this year, in 2023, just recently, the game was released on a multitude of platforms. The, the version you're looking at is the Xbox One version, although it is running on an Xbox Series X. It is worth noting there is not an Xbox Series X specific build of it. It's essentially just a backwards compatibility thing. Um, so so yeah, I don't know if there's going to be any sort of optimization patch for the Series X, it wasn't mentioned, but that wouldn't be too shocking considering that the Xbox brand is basically irrelevant in Japan, so they may not really care about optimizing it on that particular platform. Not saying it doesn't run well, it certainly does, it just may not even need it because of the lack of complexity of the game in particular. There's also a Nintendo Switch build as well as a PS4 and PS5 specific one. On top of that there is a Steam release. So. Why are we talking about it? This is not my normal thing. It's just because of who created it. Uh, because it's Yu Suzuki and because of this game. This game is essentially the motive for putting it out there at all was essentially to have YSNet be developing something that wasn't just Shenmue related. That way you can kind of hone the craft of the developers and the team you have working for you, make sure everybody's employed, get a game out there, bring in some additional funding. In other words, supporting this game does actually go somewhere in the possible uh, development of Shenmue 4 which would be very nice, and that's actually the big reason that I care so much about it. Also, it is just kind of interesting to see what else Yu Suzuki could be doing. Now, the game itself, if we want to take some time to talk about that, which, of course, we, uh, we should, just by looking at it, as you've seen, it's an on-rail shooter that is very similar to Space Harrier, which actually makes a lot of sense since Yu Suzuki himself did create the Space Harrier franchise back in the day while he was still with Sega. Uh, those are fun games, but you know, this is essentially like, you can almost think of it as a spiritual successor to that. Um, I'm not certain Yu Suzuki would make that claim. I think that if he really wanted to do a spiritual successor, Sega would have let him do it with the full license and everything. But my guess, and this is purely a guess, was that the reason he didn't go that route is he just wanted to keep this game as low budget and independent as possible so he didn't have to involve anybody else just to the least amount of strings attached and the maximum amount of profit brought into the YSNet co company. So that would be my guess. Also just simply looking at it, it seems to take inspiration visually from certain elements of Panzer Dragoon, which if you play it you might notice especially because they have a lot of flying dragons and so on and so forth. But gameplay itself is also kind of similar in that at least Panzer Dragoon 1 and 2 uh, for the Saturn were very much on rails, similar things where you're kind of on flying, you know, animals essentially. The storyline is very visual. There's not really much of any dialogue, if any at all. In fact, I didn't notice any. It's just kind of visual storytelling. And it's one of these fantasy type of universes where nothing really makes sense, but you kind of follow at the core what they're trying to say, which is just, you know, a society oppressed and we got to find back and we're gonna shoot at stuff to do that you know it's, it's not very complex and the gameplay itself is just like I said an on rail shooter so there's a lot of targeting mechanisms where you just lock onto things and you shoot and you know in typical Yu Suzuki gameplay fashion it starts off kind of simplistic 
uh, just teaching you the absolute basics, kind of holding your hand through it. But then it does kind of drop that very relatively quickly once it knows you know how to play the game and starts getting you know more and more complicated. This, the in a good way, you know, like most Yu Suzuki games, it introduces new complications into the gameplay as it's going to try and increase the challenge level, but also to teach you and essentially immunize you to what to expect later. Uh, thus, kind of keeping it fresh while also just you know kind of keeping it the same. And, and if that makes any sense. But um, yeah, ultimately, I think I only could get through like the first five or six levels uh, just in kind of an initial playthrough. Like the footage you're seeing here is really only my first time trying it. Um, but that said, it was fun. It seems to have a lot more content beyond it because uh, there, there are other areas where they'll show you things like a map and how far your progress is. But it's, it's, it was kind of hard for me to judge exactly how far it goes. But uh, it's I wouldn't put it past somebody to be able to kind of sit down and play the whole thing in one go if they really wanted to. I kind of doubt it's like super long as a, as a game. But that said, you know, I, I did have my fun with it. So basically, uh, as a game, interesting little rail shooter, nice little budget title. It will get physical editions on the Switch and the PS5 from my understanding, at least in Europe at the time I'm recording this. I don't know if there's ever going to be a physical Xbox edition. I don't know if it's going to get physical editions in North America either, but just based on like the quick looking into it I did, that's what happened. Also, I want to give kind of a shout out to YSNet because they did send me the Xbox key for free for the purpose of review, so thanks to them and full disclosure on that. But yeah, uh, Shenmue fans... Uh, this is something to kind of take note of if you have any interest in a Shenmue 4. Supporting this game does kind of inch us a little bit closer to that. So I just thought I would do my part here just to show you guys everybody, uh, show everybody what this game is. It is not a bad game. It's fun. If you like Space Harrier, if you're the old kind of Sega guy who does like Space Harrier, I don't know if you're ever going to get another one. And you probably wouldn't get another one made by its original creator, which this is. So if you're at all a fan of Shenmue, Space Harrier, and debatably Panzer Dragoon, this game might be right up your alley. So take a look at it if you want, uh, and you can watch other you know videos on it and see more gameplay and everything, but I think it was pretty neat. So there you go. Hey guys, post-production Adam here with just a small update. So I did a little bit more homework into the physical edition release, and it turns out it is coming out in North America on PS5 and Switch, and funny enough, comes out on my birthday, December 8th, so that's kind of an interesting little tie together. The other thing I should have mentioned and I didn't is the music. Um, I'm not really sure if I can play any of it for you, so maybe look that up in a separate video, sorry. But the music is actually very shocking. Like when it first turned out, I was like, wow, that has more, uh, for lack of a better word, epic than I was, uh, in, you know, expecting. I disabled it in my footage just because sometimes music gets a little uh, funky on YouTube. But uh, the only story there is that this was actually done by a Dutch composer uh, known as Valencia, which I guess has been a longtime fan of Yu Suzuki. And Yu Suzuki apparently was a fan of Valencia. Valencia reached out to Yu Suzuki as just like, hey, I heard you're working on a game, I'd love to do the music for it. And Yu Suzuki actually responded and was like, yeah, that sounds great. So let that be a lesson. Uh, I don't pretend to know a whole lot about Valencia or even music in general, but if you're a fan of somebody, uh, we live in an age now where it's actually possible to reach out and get involved and actually help to aid their work. So never give up on your dreams because sometimes your dreams become reality. Which is actually the perfect way to explain Shenmue, to be honest. Uh, anyway, yeah, told you guys, just kind of a quick video where we just kind of take a look at it uh, and I think that is fun. If you guys like this idea where I occasionally check out a game and just talk about it for a few minutes, let me know. Uh, and maybe we'll do more of these in the future. But anyway, that'll do it for now. So thank you guys very much for watching. Again, thank you to YSNet for the code. Uh, please, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check all the social media stuff in the description. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Spreadshirt and my travel channel. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.